Hi, welcome to Talking Books and Stuff, the program that talks all about books and writing and stuff. Here's your host, Dennis Rimmer. Welcome back. Another episode of Talking Books and Writing and Cartooning and stuff like that. Uh, with us today from somewhere on the west coast of Canada, we have Adrian Rayside. Good day to you, sir. How's things in your life? Dennis, as always, an absolute pleasure talking to you. Everything, everything's fine here. Um, not as chilly as where you are right now, but... Uh, Hey, you've only got six more months of that, and uh, we've only got two more months of that. So Right. <laughs> That's right. We're talking with cartoonist Adrian Rayside. Let's get the sad part over with first. Uh, Adrian, for years we've enjoyed here um, The Other Coast, a wonderful comic strip, we'll call them, for want of a better word. Uh, well, sadly, it's no longer in our so-called daily paper, which only comes out five days a week. Um what happened? Did they just kind of dump you, or what happened? Well, it was it was, it was a collective dump, I think. Um, <laughs> pretty much all the comics they had, uh, Post Media owns, or, yeah, still owns the the Star Phoenix, which is, is would be your newspaper. Yep. Um, and they own pretty much all the dailies, except in, in the East Coast, um, most of the dailies in Canada, you know, leading up through through Quebec. And uh, unfortunately, uh, what's happening with cartoon syndication now is that you're getting some of the larger syndicates out of the U.S. Uh, who will come in and and approach these ch newspaper chains and say, "Look, it's cheaper for you to do a, a, a chain-wide buy of one page of mixed comics." And basically, the, so what happens is that these these uh, with post media, they just act all the comics they had on their existing comics page, which would be some from the syndicate, some from me personally, some from other Canadian cartoonists personally. So it's kind of a, a nice mix, usually picked by the individual editor over the years. And, and again, it's, it's a mix. So every comics page is different. But then when the syndicates come in, um, of course, not all of them do it, but most of them do, uh, they'll say, okay, we'll give you um, X number of comics, which you can put on one page, and every single newspaper will have the same comics page. And we can do it for X dollars, which is obviously way cheaper than, than what they're paying now. Um, but the unfortunate thing is that you lose the, the um, uniqueness of each comics page. And as a result, you know, some of the good comics, like mine, of course, the other coast, um, get axed. And it, but it's just, it's just the bitter reality of the newspaper business, which is, I'm sad to say, uh, going downhill very, very, very fast. And I, I wonder... Know, ten years from now, if we have this conversation, um, will we be talking fondly uh, about? Oh, I remember those days when we had a daily newspaper. You know, yeah. uh, who knows? Right, it's crazy. So, is the other coast available around the world elsewhere, or? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It, it's it, still um, it's, it's still in, in quite a few newspapers, and it's syndicated out of the United States, um, and in, in a whole lot of U.S. newspapers, and, and internationally. And you can still get it online on 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 my Facebook page, and, and uh, other other online places have it too. So it's still out, and I'm still drawing it. Oh, uh, good. So. You know, I enjoy drawing it, and you know, the funny <laughs> thing is, Dennis, every time I think about, well, you know, it's been twenty some odd years, twenty five years drawing this trip. You know, maybe I'm sort of had us run this course, and I think, look, with all the, the letters I get, the fan mail I get, and, and a lot of it's for the, for, the, for the dogs, not for me, you know, <laughs> am I going to be disappointing the readers? You know, and you sort of, you, you feel, you, you, the readers have been loyal to you, and, and you feel you should try and be loyal to them, too. Right, and how um, about in your own uh, household? Do you have dogs and cats, or not at all? <laughs> We're between dogs right now. Oh. Um, Coco and Saka, who, who uh, are in the strip, um, they were real dogs, and they, they, they live on the strip, but um, just the way things are right now, it's just difficult to, to have dogs, but um, we'll end up rescuing a couple more. I mean, I always think that, that dogs find you, yep. not the other way around. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you have dogs, Dennis, but... Oh, yeah, we got dogs, uh, ones outside the office door here, and one of the cats didn't want to leave, so we had to buy <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know you know about dogs. Then, yeah, we got a yeah, dog and two nice. cats, and uh, they kind of found us, yes. So yeah. more, more or less, but uh, 
they yeah, ended up here. Once they're there, they never leave, you know? No. Nope. Um, it's funny, after Coco died, uh, he used to sleep at the foot of the stairs when I came down from the studio, and I'd always have to step over him. Because he'd always, the, the dogs park themselves in the most awkward spot. It's just, that's yes. their job. No kidding. And, <laughs> and for, for months after the Coco died, I was still stepping over that spot, that spot, oh. <laughs> and the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> It's like he was still there. Oh, exactly. Um, and uh, we're talking with Adrian Rayside, of course, and uh, the, what prompted this conversation was a couple of books uh, we got from Harbor Publishing, Wildlife for Idiots and Other Animal Cartoons. <laughs> it's just hilarious. So were these cartoons done specifically for a book, or did they have a, a life elsewhere or before the book? Yeah, they're, they're actually culled from the strip. Um, I just, last year, I'm, I'm not even, I'm going to plug another book, what the hell, I'm here. Um, um, I did a book last year called uh, The World According to Dogs, An Owner's Manual, which was all, basically, it's, a, it's an owner's manual for people um, who have a dog or are getting a dog, and it's all cartoon. It's, 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 a, it's sort of a, a tongue-in-cheek kind of um, owner's manual for, you know, like, like you've got an owner's manual for a car or whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. um, and it became a bestseller. And um, so the, the publisher was talking about, let's do something for next year. And, and this whole idea of doing a, uh, a book of old wildlife cartoons, because I've done so many over the last 20 some odd years with this trip. Um, so he said, well, well, we'll go in and, and, and see what you got. So I, I was going through something like six or 7,000 strips Pulling, and I didn't realize that I'd done so many cartoons on wildlife, you know, the bears and the eagles and yep. the wolves and penguins and you name it. And to me it was fascinating because I don't remember what I drew last week, <laughs> let alone 20 years ago. And it was kind of a surprise. One surprise was, wow, um, why did I draw that? That's so rotten. <laughs> the other was like, wow, I never remember drawing that. That's really good. So a lot of the stuff got culled out, and we left of what we have. But as we were putting it together, my, my problem is I'm, I'm a fiddler. I'm, I'm a notorious fiddler. And, and I'd look at a strip and think, it's really good, but you know, the drawing's kind of crap. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll just change this. So, so what I thought was going to be, yeah, maybe a month, two months' work, ended up being months of work fiddling <laughs> with captions and, and, and changing drawing, and even and adding some new 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 cartoons to it, as, as I thought that needed to, uh, some of the chapters needed to be um, beefed up because he, the book is actually divided up in chapters. You've got wolves, you've got bears, you've got whales, you've got you know penguins, and on and on. And so uh, the publisher would say, "Well, we've got we've got enough wolves, but not enough penguins." <laughs> so I have to start thinking, okay, I need penguin, penguin, penguin cartoon, penguin. So that's sort of how it came about. Um, and, and, and it's interesting for, for me to look back and, and see how these characters took on, or these, you know, I guess, say characters of their own, like personalities of their own, I guess is a way to put it. Um, what, what was originally Carl the short-sighted wolf became Carl the wolf that couldn't, couldn't kill anything. Um, uh, you know, uh, and and the bears, you know, the bear that uh, basically became addicted to 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 garbage, like like bears do. But you know, yep. nobody gets shot. Nobody gets shot in 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 uh, <laughs> wildlife idiots. <laughs> so then, of course, the, the, the issue was the title. And, and I did this this cartoon years ago, and it was wildlife for idiots. And if anyone hasn't hasn't seen the book, basically it's a it's a safari. It was originally called safari for idiots, but they thought that was too too uh, restrictive, so it's changed to wildlife. So basically what it is, it's a safari jeep with a bunch of people with their cameras, and they're going through the, driving through, obviously, in Africa, and there's a, a lion, uh, there's, there's a hippopotamus, there's a zebra, there's a baboon, uh, all around the, the jeep. Yep. And each each of the characters will have a, uh, well, you know, in conventions, well, has a tag on it saying, hello, yep. zebra, hello, lion, hello. You know, so anyway. yeah, right. <laughs> and I thought it was very funny, but I, but I, so I sort of set it aside, and I, I, I kept coming back to it, thinking, that's a really funny idea. <laughs> um, and so then the, 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 the issue was with the publisher and then people at, in, in editorial, they read the department and said, well, does this mean that people who are going to buy the book are idiots? No. And so someone said, well, anyone that will buy one of Adrian's books probably is an idiot. <laughs> so, okay, that works then. <laughs> so, 
but we qualified with and other animal cartoons. So, okay, I think that works. But there was an awful lot of backwards and forwards. Is, like, is this title going to work? And yeah. we kept trying other titles, but none of them worked as well as that one. So uh, we stuck with it. Yep, and that's on the cover of Wildlife Rudy. It's another animal yes. cartoons. And, uh, <laughs> and there's on the back, it said Noah's Ark is sinking. And the wife says, I told you it was a bad idea to take the termites. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is that you know, animals are so funny. That they, I, mean, I mean, to me, it's like funny. You're a termite, and your job is to eat somebody's house. I mean, like, yep. well, I mean what, what a, that's your only job in life. That house, I want you to eat it. Okay, sure, we're going to eat that house. That's it. You don't have to worry about taxes or anything else. You know, uh, bears. Um, we're going to sleep all winter and go out and, and scrum stuff. Okay, pretty good. That's, and, and, and it's by giving them the personalities... Um, like Carl the Wolf, uh, you're able to, in some cases, it's almost like a reflection on ourselves. You know, yeah, we have people that, that, that just some reason cannot keep a job, can hold a job done. Okay, that's Carl the Wolf. You know? and, and subconsciously, these, these animals just sort of reflect us because, I, you know, I mean, it, there's, a, there's a, uh, um, uh, an eagle that, that, that Mr. Salmon um, get heck when he gets back to the nest and the wife says, where's the salmon? You know, yeah. um, I mean, there, there have to be some parallels to to humans in in the animal world. <laughs> there has to be. I'm just chortling away here because all the cartoons are hilarious. Um, on a bit more serious side, now you still do a. Is it a weekly cartoon for the Times Colonist? Um, I do actually three a week. Three. Um, now, yeah, uh, back to to gosh, I think when. I'm trying to think. Um, I know, well, I've been doing it since seventy. For the Times Call since nineteen seventy nine, and it went up to. Oh, I think I was doing. I was doing. Yes, I was doing up to seven a week. <laughs> it was like, well, that's too much. Too much. And, and I, I had to took some time off, um, which is a euphemism to say they got rid of me for a few for a few years, <laughs> um, and then uh, uh, asked me back, and and uh, I thought, yeah, okay, uh, that was three years ago. Um, they said, hey, would you like to come back and draw again? And, and I started again. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. Yes. And I said, wow, what do you, what do you, what do, you do? How can you make fun of, uh, how can you find humor in people dying, people getting sick? Uh, you know, I mean, that was a difficult thing. But, but what I was doing was I was, I was targeting the weird stuff that came along with the pandemic. In other words, the lining up, the, 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 the face masks, the, 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 the you know, sanitizing of everything. So that's sort of where I focused. And it actually worked. And I, and I got a lot of mail from readers who were saying, you know, thanks for, for bringing some humor into what, what has been such, you know, every day you look at the newspaper and there's so much bad news and then you turn <laughs> to the editorial page and there was something that actually was, was, was lighter. So in a way it worked. But it was really tough coming up with stuff that I thought would work. You know, it was it wasn't that easy. But it seems like we've we've sort of gone now into we went from um, the pandemic and the virus to then we went to the the uh, uh, freedom truckers and the anti vaxxers and the anti this and anti that and and it's funny, Dennis. I've noticed that a lot of the mail I get, well, people who you know, not everybody likes what editorial cartoons can can be very polarizing and. And normally people write and say, ah, oh, your stuff's crap, you know. <laughs> Fine, okay, great. You know, in some cases they're right. <laughs> and the the mail that, that I was getting, especially during the Freedom Trucker whole thing, was much darker. The, 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 I would, I would, I'd say some of it was hate mail, but not just so different from what you know, I would be getting over the last, I've been doing this for 45 years, so over the last 40 years, Canadians tend to be a little more, more uh, I want not say forgiving, but a little more genteel. But all of a sudden, it seems that maybe it's after the Trump era, people feel they can say more stuff that would be pretty hurtful uh, that they normally wouldn't. I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it. But yep. it's sort of, I had noticed it. I understand. And with uh, Adrian Rayside is with us today, right now, right here, and in your ear. And I'm just going to ask about your daily routine. Routine, like, um, do you have a routine, or is it uh, hit and miss, wait for ideas to strike, or do you plunk yourself down oh. in front of the drawing table at a certain time and uh, work your way through the day? How does your life work in that regard? 
I, I wish I could turn up in my studio and look at a blank piece of paper and say, okay, there it is. Yeah, got it. Great, fine. I'll just whip that thing off and I'll be uh, out so drunk by noon. <laughs> but unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It's just seven, for some weird, odd reason, and it shouldn't be because I've, I've always swore that I wouldn't, you know, I've got less free time now than I did, say, 20 years ago. And, and I'm, I, I don't understand why, but <laughs> cause I've got the strip that, that I do, which is, you know, I do, do the, the six dailies and then one Sunday. And that, that my deadlines are four to six weeks ahead. I right. have into the syndicate. And then the editorial cutting, which is you draw today for tomorrow's paper. So, yeah, first thing in the morning, you're up and, and either you've got the idea from yesterday or ideas from yesterday, which you're going to start inking, or you're looking for that idea. And you're, you, you basically you take that blank piece of paper and just hope something turns up. I don't know what the process is. Uh, if, if I knew, I'd write a book, yep. and I'd be making a ton of money. Right. <laughs> so, so I just, it's either there or it isn't. And so, uh, I wish I could say, yeah, I, the idea comes, I, I pencil it, ink it, done, gone. But many times I'll come up with 15, 20, 25, 30 roughs of ideas, which I work to see if I can make something of it. Sometimes it'll pop out of the page. Other times you just say, forget it. That, that, that. That whole idea isn't that the whole concept not going to work. Try a different topic, and that happens very often. And it's just part of the business. I think any I don't think any cartoonist can sit down and say, "Yeah, I've got the idea." Although sometimes, you know, especially with a strip, you'll be driving down the street or walking, and you'll see something, and you think, "That's funny," and then you've got to be careful to write it down because by the time I get home, I've forgotten, and it happens so often. It's like, "What the heck was that idea? I thought it was so funny." I did write it down, down. Or, or the one you have in the middle of the night and you're going to write it down it's gone it's gone the next morning it's, it's just not there but it, it's in, in a way you're with the editorial cartoon you're, you're the, it's a little easier in the way that the topics are given to you because what's happening that week what's happening that, that morning or yesterday um, I can do something on Canada Post because people are complaining about the new surcharge okay that's I've got the topic now I just have to work that into a cartoon with a strip, I've got the dogs, I've got the penguins, I've got the bears, the eagles, but I'm looking for the topic to to insert them into the topic. So, um, okay, with with uh, a dog agility, uh, of course, um, what happens? Okay, so you've, you've got you know the tunnel that they they, they they run through. So you've got that. You think okay, agility, of course, agility, of tunnel. Okay, what if this? What if like the dog from last year, which was the champion, put on some weight. What if he got stuck in the tunnel? <laughs> There's the idea, you see, and, and it's just, it's basically like taking two or three fairly normal things, putting them together and giving them a twist. Right. And, or other times you just look at something and think, that's funny, and, you, and, and it works on the strip. Again, not every strip works, <laughs> too. I mean, I look back on, I look back on stuff that comes in the newspaper that I drew four or five weeks ago, and I think, oh man, you know, if I spent another half hour on that, or if I worked that caption different, it would have been funnier. <laughs> and that happens all the time. You're, you're, you're always thinking, I can make it better, you know. Um, well, for example, I'm working on one, which is it's going to come out sometime next year, early next year. And it's, I've got this thing with alligators and alligator handbags and stuff. I just, I mean, yeah, it's tough on alligators. Right. <laughs> but I just think it's funny. So you've got these two alligators and they're, and they're standing at the fireplace, you know, like the, the trophy room. And you're, you're, there, there's a, a framed uh, picture of a, a alligator skin handbag. And basically one of the, one of the alligators saying, yes, that's, um, uh, we're, we're most proud of Uncle, Uncle Larry. He was the only one in our family to become a designer handbag. <laughs> And so I thought that was funny, and I'm, and I'm looking at the, the, when I finished inking it, and I scanned it, and it's like, something's wrong, something's wrong. And what it was, was I needed fo uh, uh, framed photographs of, say, uh, a, a different type of handbag uh, and some, some alligator, uh, ha uh, uh, alligator skin boots, because otherwise, you know, it, it, it's like, it, it sort of loses the humor if you don't realize that he had also other family members <laughs> that became <laughs> accessories. So it's just those little tiny things that, that hopefully you catch them before they go to print, but sometimes you don't. And right now we're flipping through the Adrian Rayside website, which is uh, RaysideCartoon.com. Is that right? 
Yes. Yep, Ray's side is R-A-E-S-I-D-E, cartoon. And so it's all one word, RaySideCartoon.com. New projects, and it's got Dennis, the dragon who came to stay, and Dennis and the tree guzzler. So how did I get into your works? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've done, I think, over the years, 20, I think, I think Wildlife already is 26 books, I think I've done. Um, I have to look, I was around that. But there was a series of kids, my, when, I was, when I was very young, um, we lived in New Zealand, and, and things were, books were kind of expensive, so everything was, well, everyone was expensive down there, <laughs> nobody yeah. had much money. And so my mother, who was very, very talented, she was, she was a playwright, um, wrote opera, operettas and, and, and extremely talented, also wrote these little kids' books for, for, for me. Um, and some of them were published, and one of them was, was Dennis the Dragon, and he was a smokeless dragon. He was, he was a dragon that couldn't smoke, so his family would kick him out of the nest, saying, you're, you're a freak, you know, you've got to smoke, everything out of there. <laughs> and uh, so he ends up going to a village, and everyone's terrified of him, because he doesn't smoke. And the whole idea about the book was that it's okay to be different. Right. And this is when everybody, this book was written when everybody smoked like a chimney. So, you know, <laughs> go figure, right? Anyway, so unfortunately, my mother passed away in 1988, and, and a year later, uh, Doubleday Canada um, signed me up for a multi book contract. And I said, yeah, I'd like to do that, but I want to do, I want to redo the, Dennis the Dragon. I want to re real, because I illustrated them a long, long time ago, and it was on a private press, and long out of print. And they said, yeah, yeah, okay, all right, as long as you do the other books, it's fine. So I said, yeah, yeah. So I, I re-illustrated it. And we, we put the first book out, Dennis the Dragon, and it was a huge success. I mean, it sold a ton of copies. And, and so they, they uh, uh, signed me up for two more Dennis's, a Dennis and the uh, tree, uh, gosh, I can't remember now. Here, here I am, so long ago. But it was two more books, and it was all about recycling and, and reforesting. And it's, a, and it's this dragon that, that is so concerned about doing things right, he messes things up at the end, but in actual fact, it all works out at the end anyway. So the idea being that, okay, there's going to be a series of Dennis books, and then Double Day got bought or something happened, and so they, they dropped the, 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 the series, and I went on to different publishers. But I've always thought it was a great kid's book, and so I've, I've, I'm tinkering with Dennis the Tree Guzzler and uh, all about his family, and the whole thing is his family of slobs. So he has to fix what they're doing. So I'm, I'm, it's, it's one of those things where it's sitting on the shelf, half done, along with a bunch of other projects. That <laughs> one of these days, when I don't have such punishing deadlines, I will finish. Okay. And, and again, if I can find a publisher for them, who right. knows, right? <laughs> well, the Wildlife for Idiots, the latest from Adrian Rayside, Wildlife for Idiots, and other animal cartoons, and they're all just hilarious. And some of them have a bit of a not a nasty turn, but kind of a, a dark side to them, a bit uh, yeah. like um, a lemming walks into a bar, but he doesn't jump off the cliff because he's afraid of heights. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the funny thing is every time I, I, uh, I do a lemming cartoon, I always get mail from people saying, well, actually, you know, the lemmings don't actually do that. That was a Disney thing. And it's like, yeah, I know, but also lemmings don't walk into bars either, you know? <laughs> it's like, of course, it's all BS, you know? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay. But it is also funny when you think that here's a lemming that's afraid of heights. Okay, yeah, yeah that, to me that's funny. That's funny. It is hilarious. Uh, Wildlife for Idiots and Other Animal Cartoons by Adrian Rayside. Adrian, before we go, can you give us that website number again or address again? Oh, yeah, it's uh, RaysideCartoon.com. R-A-E-S-I-D-E, cartoon, singular, dot com. There you go, RaysideCartoon.com. Adrian, thank you very much, and thank you for keeping us laughing all these years. Thank you. Well, I appreciate it, and, and thank you for, for calling, Dennis. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for visiting with us today. This is Talking Books and Stuff with Dennis Rimmer. Contact him at dennis at talkingbooks.tk. Thank you, and may all the good news be yours. Oh, and don't forget to check out his book, The Great Canadian Notebook, available across Canada and at Amazon.ca. Oh, oh.